How in the world are you so fast that 10 of you are in here before I can even set my phone down? Very impressive. Very impressive. Apparently, I've been playing to your addiction circuitry in your head, just like I planned, because you also love coffee. Mm. Ah, good stuff. All right, so sometimes I watch television, the news in particular, and I'm waiting for them to say the obvious thing, and then nobody does, and I check in the next day, and nobody's saying the obvious thing. And so sometimes it comes down to me to get on here and tell you the obvious thing that is the story that is the only part that's not being reported. All right. <laughs> and so we've heard a lot of talk uh, lately about which side is inciting violence with their their memes and, and their uh, rhetoric. And so CNN has claimed that the uh, the wrestling uh, the wrestling meme that uh, President Trump sat around was encouraging people to beat up logos, I guess, or, or CNN reporters or something. And I keep waiting for somebody to make the logical um, categorizations here. Right? Now, let, let me give you two examples, and let me see if you can figure out what the better way to sort this stuff out is. All right? So the way, the way it's being framed right now is people on the right say bad things that might incite violence. People on the left also say bad things that might incite violence. It's a tie. No, your side does slightly worse things. No, your side does slightly worse things. That, my friends, is the weeds. That's, that's the, that's the low-level children bickering level. Now watch me, watch me high ground all of their asses right now. I'm going to give you a reframing that once you hear it, you won't be able to see it the same anymore. All right? If you thought the frame was, you do bad things that incite violence, no, you do, they're all about equal, right? But here's the thing. Some of the things that people were saying in memes and in rhetoric were comparing people to real historical figures, such as Hitler. And in my case, I was compared to Joseph Goebbels a number of times during the election when people said, hey, you're helping Trump win, you're Joseph Goebbels. Goebbels was Hitler's uh, publicity guy, if you will. <laughs> he, he was the influencer for Nazi Germany. Um, now compare that. And when people compared Hitler, um, Trump to Hitler, and when they compared me to Goebbels, what they didn't say is, ha, 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 that's funny. They didn't say that. They said you actually have the qualities of a Nazi. That, my friends, is moral permission to kill me. Because as I've said often, if I had a chance to kill Goebbels or Hitler, and I really was sure that's who they were, you know, as long as there was no identity problem, I'd probably risk my life to kill them. I hope you would do, right? Now compare that to uh, any of President Trump's memes in which somebody gets, um, well, let, let's, let's go down right down the line. When Trump said, I could shoot somebody on Fifth Avenue, did anybody not know that was a joke? I mean, it's a joke the way New Yorkers joke. I understand it's not funny in California, but trust me, <laughs> if you have sort of a New York sense of humor, it's just the way we talk, all right? You've, you've heard enough of my periscopes to know that even if I try not to say fuck, I can't do it. I just can't do it. I just wasn't raised not to say fuck. It just comes out once in a while. And I totally get that these periscopes would be better. I get this. These periscopes would be better if I didn't say that. I know that. You know, people tell me that all the time. It's obvious. It's common sense. You know, even my gut brain knows that. Uh, but it is just the way I, I was raised. It's the way I talk. It's sort of a New Yorker carryover, I think. Um, <laughs> I'm wrong. So take a look at that example. Then take a look at the example where uh, Trump was saying in his, uh, 
in his rallies back in the election cycle. You know, back in my day, we'd beat up that guy, and people laughed and ha ha. You know, but that's a long way from you know, hey, we should beat up these guys. All right. If you say it with a smile on your face in the context of lots of wild, crowd-entertaining things, people take it as a joke. And I'm sure the people who were there mostly took it as a joke. You know, there's always some crazies, and, and they are a problem. Uh, then you look at his meme about wrestling, and clearly wrestling is, you know, wrestling is fake news itself, and it was just a ridiculous thing. It was literally showing an act, <laughs> you know, <laughs> showing an act. Now... Kathy Griffin, uh, with her fake uh, head, that was clearly, she, she's a comedian, so you should look at that as comedy. But the problem is, this was comparing the president to ISIS, <laughs> to literally dangerous killers, like Hitler, like Joseph Goebbels. Right? Now, I'm not sure that that's the same kind of influence as a funny meme. Um, I think the the play where people saw a character portrayed by the play in the park everybody was talking about where a character who looked like President Trump was murdered by a bunch of other people. Um, now, I think you could argue that that was all just in the context of entertainment, and I would argue that too, that uh, that's not the worst thing that ever happened. But in the context where people are already thinking maybe we elected Hitler. That's a different context, right? If we had the most popular president in the world, let's say it was Jimmy Carter, you know, during, I don't know if he was ever popular, but let's say it was Jimmy Carter, president, and they did that same play, you would just say to yourself, oh, I get it, they just put the president there and there, it just makes it a little more interesting. It wouldn't mean anything to you, right? But you throw, you throw President Trump in there, who the world, you know, 30% of the country was thinking we just elected Hitler, and then you show an approving crowd of people murdering him, is that the same as a funny meme? Is that the, is that the same as calling CNN fake news? <laughs> you know, so here's the, the reframing. If you thought the framing was, oh, the people on the right say things that incite violence, and the people on the left say things that incite violence, I would suggest that both sides do some things which are just fine. They're, you know, anybody who sees them can tell that it's just a joke. Doesn't matter which side's doing it. If anybody who's watching it knows it's just a joke, it's just a joke. But if, if either side sends around a meme which suggests there's a real thing happening, such as we elected Hiller, or you know, somebody's going to do something just horrible, that's not the same. That's not the same as a funny joke where there's a little slapstick comedy. Everybody knows the the Three Stooges, you know, is meant to be uh, entertainment, even if you don't like them. Um, so, so that's the frame. There are some things comparing you to a real evil uh, person, and I would say those are actually dangerous because they're moral permission to kill. And then there are other things that are just funny images that are obviously intended to be funny. They're not intended. You can tell that they're not intended to incite anything, right? When, when, you, when you say, hey, Hitler got elected, and you send Hitler images and, and stuff like that, you are sort of asking people to go to the streets. Or else, why'd you do it, right? You know, it, nobody says, hey, Hitler got elected. Let's just see how it plays out. You know, people don't see that. It's pretty much a call to action, right? But if somebody sends you a funny meme where, you know, uh, a cartoonish character gets taken down, there's nobody that says, now that I've seen that meme, I was only thinking about, you know, the horrible violence I was going to inflict on my fellow citizens. But now that I've seen that meme, hmm, maybe I will. Now, of course, all bets are off with crazy people. Crazy people can and do get influenced by anything. But they also are influenced by movies, and they're influenced by TV shows, or influenced by the news. Um, you know, probably just ordinary news coverage on CNN. Well, let me, let, me, let me state this as something I'm confident in saying. I would say that the biased coverage by CNN of President Trump um, incites violence. 
because the people who watch those shows are the ones getting violent. <laughs> and and it makes sense because they're portraying him as uh, a danger to civilization. Right? When when President Trump says CNN is fake news, and sadly for CNN, there have been some bad uh, bad events lately that uh, make that point seem a little stickier than it normally would be. Uh, is that's not a, that's not a call to violence, is it? Nobody takes it that way. But CNN's just basic coverage is pretty much a call to violence because people think, oh my God, if any of this is true. Uh, if we've really elected a strongman, dictator-like person, and their panel says that all the time. That's sort of a call to action. All right. So, um, by the way, I got the, I got kicked off my last Periscope because of an incoming call. I know I could set my, uh, set my phone so that that doesn't happen, but I would forget to set it back, and I don't get many calls. <laughs> that, that one also was a wrong number. That's, that's how few calls I get. Uh, <laughs> Trump's handshakes. Yeah, there's some news out of the out of Poland that Melania allegedly didn't shake hands with the f- first lady over there, but she really did. And you know, they showed a video on it minutes later on on Twitter. And even the uh, is he president or prime minister or whatever he is in Poland uh, tweeted that. <laughs> You know, don't believe the fake news. Now, come on. How adorable is that? That the Poland, the Poland likes what's happening over here so much that they're, you know, even adopting the, you know, Trump's mannerisms and way of speaking. It was adorable. Uh, Scott Adams for governor. You would not want me to be your political leader. They said the crowd was fake. Well, they were bust in, but I don't think anybody was hiding that fact. All right, I'm going to go do some other things. Until then, remember, there's persuasion everywhere. Stay alert. Stay alive.